Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you now how to convert your angles from degrees to radians and how to get your average, I'm sorry, the uncertainty in the sine double angles. So let's get started. I have the average ranges already input here and I have my angles in degrees. I now I'm going to convert these angles from degrees to radians. Same thing, you can input a symbol just as before. Uh, using the insert symbol tab but in this case starting with underneath this theta symbol I input I type equals radians open parentheses I click this 15.1 degrees close parentheses and it gives me the value notice I did type 25.0 here but Excel just truncates that that's fine because your table in Word is the precision matches the uncertainty there so I grab bottom right hand corner I click, hold, drag all the way down. It auto-populates the radian values for all of these angles. And now I need two times those angles. So I go equals two times. I use the asterisk symbol. I grab this C2 entry, click equals, and this gives me two times all of these values. Drag, hold all the way down. Now I'm, get, I'm going to get sine of two times these values equals sine, open parentheses, Grab this, close parentheses, click, hold, drag all the way down. It auto-populates for me. Looks very nice. Even though there are a lot of digits, I'll show you how to reduce later. Uh, the uncertainty in my angles was 0 0.1 degrees. I'm going to convert that to radians. 0 0.1, close parentheses, and these are the radians. I'm going to do two times the uncertainty in the radians. There we go. And now I'm going to do sine two times the uncertainty in the radians. So this equals sine, open parentheses of this value, close parentheses. So these are the sine of the uncertainty values. But for each angle that I have, I need to add to this. I need to subtract uh, from this. And then I take half the range to get the uncertainty values that will go for my error bars. So let's start. Here I have this column. It is titled sine 2 theta. That's the measurement times 2. Take the sine of that plus sine 2 times the uncertainty of the angle. That's what we calculated here. So under this column, I'll go equals. Take this sine 2 times theta measurement. Add it to the sine 2 times the uncertainty measurement and I get this value. If I grab the bottom right hand corner, click drag all the way down, it auto populates for me. So you can see it has pulled all of the correct values, sine two theta plus its uncertainty. Now here is where we do sine minus the uncertainty associated with these. So I go equals, I come to this value up here, sine two theta, I subtract its uncertainty, right here, sine 2 delta theta. And then I can click, drag all the way down, and it auto-populates these for me. And now the uh, uncertainty associated with each of these sine double angle values equals the range out of these two divided by a two. So I'll show you. I will go equals, open a parentheses, click this value, subtract this value, close parentheses, divide by 2, and this gives me the uncertainty associated with this 15.1 degrees, the sine of this in radians. I grab the bottom right-hand corner, I click drag all the way down, and you can see that some of these values are so, there's such little difference between them, it's negligible. And indeed, your error bars, you will probably end up writing too small to show, but IB needs to see that you did these calculations. So the uncertainty in the range is 0 0.07 as before. So far, so good. Now let's graph. So in this graph, we are, for this lab, we are doing the range, and we're seeing how the range of launch depends on sine of the double angle. So I'm going to go to Insert, Charts. You do a, a blank scatter chart, and I right-click, go to Select Data. This will be, I will add here the series name, uh, let's title this launch 
range of launch versus angle of launch. The series X values, again, these are my independent variables, and I'm saying that the angle is the independent variable. So sine 2 theta goes on the X value. I will come drag all the way down. My Y values, these are the ranges. OK, and click OK. So you can see it's pretty linear. I need to add axes titles. I need to add a trend line. And I want to display the equation on the chart, so I go to more options. Let me slide this over so you can see. Go to more options. Um, sorry, trend line, more options. Make sure these green bars are selected and I scroll down, display equation on chart, and this is the value that I get. Uh, this will be sine of 2 theta. And then these values will be the ranges. The units are in meters. And again, sine 2 theta, that's a unitless number. We need to add error bars to this. So we're going to come here, go to error bars, more options. And I have right now, it's automatically selected the horizontal range, which is perfect because that's what we did all these calculations for were these. So we will come here, go to custom, specify value, positive error will be all of these values here negative error again all of these values here and I click OK you can see it makes those error bars too small to show you will need to write that underneath the table in the Word document and I can now edit my Y values if I click one of the vertical error bars so I go to custom specify value it has a positive error equaling this 0 0.07 value and this has a negative error also equal to the 0 0.07. And you can see that for this lab, just because I did it perfectly using fake data, I all of my error bars are too small to show. So I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget what the slope of this value means. And look at this. I have a very small value for my y-intercepts. But having a y-intercept with these, what, what does that tell you? It, it, it's associated with some type of error, hopefully you can remember. All right, so that's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching and study well.